What is the most hurtful thing a medical professional has ever said to you? When I was in middle school until 10th grade, I would get violent nausea any time I got hungry. It felt like my stomach was on fire, and I would miss a lot of school from feeling like shit, although I was a good student and wasn't falling behind in any way. After a lot of fighting with my mother who accused me of exaggerating, she agrees to take me to a gastroenterologist to be checked out. Before agreeing to do an endoscopy, the gastro accused me of exaggerating because I was a teen girl and that's just apparently what young women do, he suggested I was just making up these symptoms for attention, and then asked me point blank if I was lying about my pain level to skip school and suggested I had a mental health issue I was trying to cover for. I had asterisk ingurd and severe acid reflux, as confirmed by the endoscopy he reluctantly agreed to perform on me. Instead of letting it go, the gastro made a point of angrily telling me that I had the stomach of a 80-year-old man and must have been intentionally eating in a way to asterisk up my stomach. I have a family history of stomach problems and GERD. I don't understand why it was so implausible that my brother could have acid reflux at a young age, but I must be a hysterical liar when I claim to have the same symptoms in my teens. I was at the ANE once for a psych eval when I suddenly, and violently, vomited everywhere. It was completely out of the blue and I remember sitting there like okay, where TF did that come from? The nurse doing the psych eval insisted to a any doctors that I needed to be admitted for monitoring because that was not normal and she'd seen I didn't do anything to cause it. So for a weekend, I stayed in, hooked up to a saline drip because I couldn't keep anything down, whilst they ran a variety of blood tests. Come Monday, all the bloods are normal, and I still can't keep food down, which means I'm somehow making myself sick. That was the discharge diagnosis, that I was forcing my stomach to eject everything I ate with no outside help. Just pure will. For a couple of years afterwards this kept going on but any time I tried to get it seen to, the ANE diagnosis was always brought up. And I have borderline personality disorder, so trying to ask how the hell I was making myself sick by just sitting doing nothing only seemed to reinforce their beliefs. Eventually I was in with my social worker one day and threw up violently on several occasions, and after checking I hadn't taken anything I shouldn't have, called my psychiatrist and they both agreed I needed to go back to hospital. She took me there too, so I couldn't say sure I'll go and then wander off and get the bus in the opposite direction. They insisted I had a camera into the stomach. Apparently I was sitting with several stomach ulcers and a case of gastritis. But sure. I was just making myself sick this entire time. When I was about 4 I got diagnosed with child asthma, doctor told my mum it was her fault because she decided to have a child despite having asthma herself. WTF? It's not like it's a super rare disease that can be tested in the womb or something. And anyways neither of my parents have it and yet I've got dumb asterisk lungs myself comma. In the ER, about 6 months pregnant with heavy spotting and no noticeable fetal movement. Idiot doctor is unable to find the baby's heartbeat. Just looks up at me and says, yep, probably dead in there. He couldn't possibly have said it in a more casual, offhand manner. Note, I delivered my son three months later, perfectly healthy. I'm sure it's not that bad. The intake nurse at the inpatient psychiatric unit I was checking myself into after a attempt following a asterisk UAL assault. EDA, thank you to folks who commented or PM'd me. I am okay. I did a short stay at inpatient and everyone else who worked there, and, honestly and maybe more significantly, everyone else who was also staying there, was kind, thoughtful, helpful, and seemed to be much better at their jobs. This was about two years ago now. Things are better but not perfect. I think that sometimes, that is hard especially for people who are in my life, they seem to be waiting for a version of me that is, perfectly fine, and I am not sure she exists anymore. But it is better than it was, most of the time. Sometimes it is harder, or at least similar, but I am still here and sometimes, being still here is okay being the only success of the day. I have my work, I have my son, I have my circle of people who really stuck by me, and that's a lot to hold on to. I had gained a lot of weight around my midsection a few years back, and my periods stopped. I was scared, young, and thought I was pregnant, but the tests came back negative. I went to a doctor to have myself checked out and she did some basic tests before telling me. There is nothing wrong with you, you're just fat. 
I already had some body confidence issues, but hearing it from my doctor, when I was trying really hard to get in shape, really hurt, I worked hard to lose weight, but my belly wouldn't shrink, I was starting to feel really sick, and went back to the doctor, who again told me it was that I was just fat. I was crushed. A year later I went to the hospital for something unrelated, and it was discovered that I had a giant ovarian cyst, about the size of a newborn. It was throwing off my hormones, making me gain weight, among many other issues. I have since lost weight and am feeling super confident now, but that doctor really messed me up for a long time. Similar thing happened to a friend of mine. She was slim, her stomach kept growing and was very firm to the touch. Female doctor one told her she was pregnant. My friend said unless it's the second coming of Christ she can't be as she hasn't had asterisk for months. Doctor tells her she must have gotten drunk and had blackout asterisk because she's definitely pregnant, no need for a test. Male doctor too was seen for a second opinion and pretty much straight away realized it's a giant cyst requiring surgery. Was having digestive issues I eventually learned were a result of my undiagnosed cancer. Doctor suggested I should wipe better. Piggybacking with the hope that people will see this. My psych is an MD and said to me once, doctors hate being confronted with a problem they can't solve. If you feel like the doctor you see isn't giving you adequate care and consideration, you are entitled to a second opinion. EDA, it's my understanding that many insurances here in the US will cover a second opinion as it's in their best interest to do so. It's less expensive to cover that than it is to pay out due to unnecessary surgery or something that wasn't caught by one doctor. If there's doubt about insurance coverage, call the carrier and ask. Thanks for the silver and on, smiley face. Getting out of the army you are 100% healthy. My medical record was about 6 inches thick. Went to a civilian doctor and they were astonished anyone would say that. I am rated 80% disabled. My mother and grandfather were both injured in the army. They will do everything in their power to claim that you are healthy, because if you are injured they pay your medical bills for life. They tried to tell grandpa that losing all of his teeth and having a crack down his forehead did not qualify him for a purple heart. Edit, insert cringy surprise at how this blew up here. Story, grandpa was in a tank, and a tank shell bounced off his turret and slammed his head into the other side of the turret. The reason they did not want to recognize his injuries is because he pulled the teeth out himself, they were loose, and refused treatment on the skull fracture. I woke up in the hospital and heard a nurse running out saying he's awake. The doctor comes into the room and tells me to move my toes. I ask them where I am and what's going on, he just gets more insistent that I move your toes. I asked again where I was and that was going on, he almost yells at me move your toes. I said I am moving my toes, and immediately he says, you will never walk again. That's how I found out I was a paraplegic at 21 years old. I had been in a single car wreck and was thrown 70 to 80 feet from the car and my vertebrae was dislocated and laying next to another one. I don't remember the car wreck but that exchange with the doctor is burned into my brain, and that was 31 years ago. Edit 1, damn this blew up. Thank you to you all for your comments. I had a seat belt on but went off a small hill next to the interstate after clipping an end of the guardrail. Flipped the car down the hill and seat and seat belt gave way under the pressure and I went out the driver door window. My back collapsed around the door sill and dislocated one vertebra next to the one below it. I'm a big guy 6'4 and 235 at the time and the force was too much for the seat structure. I found out all these details over the next few weeks while I was in rehab. Edit 2, gold and silver thank you didn't think this story would touch as many as it has. That is really, really asterisk ed. I work for hospital billing and I often know before the patient does that they will be permanently paralyzed, because typically they aren't told until they ask or things have calmed down enough for them to be told in an acceptable way. I'm sorry that happened to you. I just don't know how you could be in so much pain being so young, I'm not going to be able to write you a prescription. My response was, you're a dipshit. I came in because I was hurt at work, doing heavy construction. I never asked for a prescription in the first place, I had assumed I was vetting an x-ray to see if I had broken anything. 